Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to create a custom model for GPT-2. If you missed the last video, there's a link in the description where I teach you how to set up GPT-2 using Anaconda and a virtual environment. Now, there are a few things that we have to do to get everything ready. Uh, when you automatically download this repository from GitHub, the encode and the train file are in this root folder or the GPT-2 folder they need to be moved over into SRC. Second thing that we need to do is let's go ahead and create a new uh, text document. And I'm just gonna name this data.txt. Um, you can actually name this whatever you want. Just make sure that the naming remains consistent in the next few steps. So if you call it uh, marketing or training or whatever you end up calling it just make sure that that name stays consistent uh, let's go ahead and just open that I just pulled up a file I'm just gonna paste some text in here and save it and just exit out um, for the purposes of this video it's not really important uh, what you'll like what you'll want to do is just make sure that whatever that data is that it's not all over the place uh, the more specific you can be in the topic the better result you're gonna get in the end um, I found that training a handful of smaller models um, that were more specific gave me better results than trying to train a larger model with all of that data together. Um, just when there's less of a chance of randomness for the AI, just works a lot better. Um, you can run some tests on the normal models like the 124 or 117 and you can see what I'm talking about. It trained off of a lot of data originally and it is very random. The purpose of this is to make it less random and to show you what you can do by actually training your own information. So now that you have all that set up, we're gonna run a few commands, convert the data.txt to a new file, and then train from there. So uh, we're just gonna run python src slash encode.py and then I called it data, right? So data.txt to data.npz. Um, it's real simple to do. You can see that it read the files 100% writing data. Now, if you don't see this 100% show up, it means something went wrong. Um, a lot of the times it'll create that file, but it'll be one kilobyte instead of, in this case, 16, and it's not gonna work. So make sure that you do see this 100% bar and that this NPZ file isn't just one kilobyte. Uh, from there, we can actually start training. Uh, so we'll just run python src slash train.py and then we're gonna call the data set dash dash data set and then data.npz. I just hit enter. It's gonna run everything, get it all set up. And in just a moment, we're gonna watch it train just for a few steps. As you can see, the checkpoint folder was created and it's analyzing all of our tokens. Now, your training is gonna depend heavily on both your CPU and GPU availability. If you have a better GPU or a better CPU, this is gonna work a whole lot better. If you're running on maybe a MacBook Pro, that's one of the, um, the least expensive versions that you can get. Um, that's what I initially was running it on it's gonna be very slow, it's gonna take a lot of time. Uh, so if you do have access to a computer that's running maybe a 2070 or a 2080, uh, you can train pretty fast and test the results a lot, uh, a lot quicker. Uh, so as you can see, it's just running um, all of these different steps. Um, I would suggest running your first model maybe 250, 300 to uh, steps, uh, and then just testing it out, seeing how it works and it'll give you a better feel for what it can do and the longer your data set is so say you have a hundred thousand words inside your your data.txt or whatever um, if you run ten thousand steps on that you're going to end up with a better result than if you ran a thousand steps on it but the reverse is true if you have a much smaller folder uh sorry file you don't need to run tens to hundreds of thousands of steps. It's like you can really get away with a couple of maybe one, two thousand. And um, it's just sort of a something that you have to play with. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and 
save this and stop the training. That's very easy to do. You just hit control C. It's going to interrupt the process. It's going to save a checkpoint. And we're just going to create the model from these 17 steps. Um, I'm not going to be running or creating any anything um, in this video particularly, so it's not going to matter too much. Uh, so this checkpoint folder, um, this is where all that data is stored. Now let's go ahead and just copy checkpoint and these three model files. So the meta index and data. So let's go ahead and just copy these. Go back to GPT-2. Go to our models folder. Let's create a new folder and let's just call him data. And like I said, keep that name consistent. We called the txt file data, the mpz files data, let's just call the model data as well. Just makes it a lot easier and we'll just paste those files in. So again, checkpoint, the model, data, index, and meta. We'll go back to models and we're gonna go to one of the pre-existing models and we need to copy checkpoint encoder sorry we just need to encoder h params and vocab we don't we don't need the uh, the checkpoint from this one so we'll just go ahead and copy those go back to models go into data and paste so no now that's those are all the files that you're going to need um, it's going to be super easy uh, from here just to run the model so I'll just come back to this folder and let's go ahead and run just the interactive samples file. So we'll run Python src slash interactive underscore conditional underscore samples dot pi dash dash model underscore name and then we're gonna just call data. So it's really as simple as that. Uh, by default, it uses the 124 uh, M model, um, but you can change that. And it, even if you download one of the other um, pre-created pre models that come with GPT-2, you can actually use that dash dash model underscore name to call and override um, the, the standard 124. And the prompt, as you can see, um, type the prompt here, just down at the bottom. Uh, but I don't really, uh, I didn't train it long enough to really show you a good result. Um, so just control C, it'll close that off and you're, uh, you're back ready to go in your terminal. That's all there is to it. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll try my best to answer them. And thanks again for watching.